So I wanted to record a routine of a couple of shots in my testing. And these shots I'm looking at using a paper filter to try to slow water down. Um, and so the first test is paper filter on the bottom. So this is me just cutting out the paper filter. And um, then I prepare the puck. For the coffee, I'm using uh, Finca Santa Cruz that Carlos gave me at the expo. So it's it's been an interesting bean that I've been using on my other machines. Um, I've been using it on the Decent and the Kim Express. So um, this is sped up just a little bit because it's a little uh, a little slow. Um, this is also the cleanest you will ever see my coffee set up simply because. Um, my clean today. So I started with uh, 23 grams in, and that turned out to be too much. So uh, I'm using the uh, a niche grinder. It's set at setting five, um, which is pretty fine. I've I've had to go finer as I've had the grinder for longer. I don't know if it's uh, the burrs got seasoned at some point. I just remember the shots changing quite a bit. I'm using a Wafo spirit basket. Uh, and so I dampened the paper filter, put it at the bottom. Um, and then I, I dose half and then I distribute and tamp. And when I distribute, I have this little plastic tool that I'm, I'm uh, kind of making a, a crater. So I'm trying to increase the density of the um, coffee at the sides. And uh, then I'm using a, a decent tamper, but I took the spring out because um, a lot of times I measure how hard I tamp and do a little WDT on the top and then make a crater at the top. So then I try to lock this in. It doesn't quite fit, um, but I'm trying to reduce as, as little headspace, get to as little headspace as possible because um, too much headspace allows water to, to go across the top of the puck and then hit the sides uh, a bit easier. The one challenge I've had with this uh, porta filter, in fact, is that I've had to shave the ears down just a little bit um, because they're at a straight edge. So even when trying to lock in this basket, and it's this basket in particular, it's the waffle baskets are just thicker. Uh, it's a little harder to lock in. So I uh, took off one gram. I got it to 22 grams, did a WDT again, tamped. I'm, I'm using a harder tamp than I normally would. Um, and I was doing lighter tamps for a while, but my uh, steam pre-infusion stuff on the Decent Espresso works a bit better if I do a harder tamp. So um, so I got it in there and, and the, the water's been heating up. I actually had to pause the heat up because it um, was about to go uh, right before I put it in. So once I locked it in, I started it again. Um, that's one of the, the downsides is you can you can have it start going before you're ready, like it doesn't like get to a temperature and then stop. And I think you could do pre preheating to do that, but I, I didn't use it. Um, so um, this is the, uh, the shot. There's a bit of side channeling. Um, this is normal for the shot. Um, I really should put a, just a video of all my shots or like the key parts of the shot. Um, so for profile, I'm doing a ramp pre-infusion. Um, that will go to four milliliters per second, but it usually doesn't hit there because the cutoff is at like two grams of output. Um, and there isn't much crema here because it, it didn't build uh, pressure much. Um, that's one of the struggles I've been having with this profile is there's, um, I sometimes it's not building enough pressure to produce crema, but it's still producing uh, like from TDS and extraction yield and taste that there it's producing good shots. Um, usually they're, they're colder shots too. So, um, and then, uh, after pre-infusion, I do a long, uh, bloom and, uh, like a 30 second bloom. And then I ramp up to, uh, like one and a half mil milliliters per second. Um, and so this is a, a two, uh, to one. So I did 22 grams in, or sorry, it's a, not a two to one. It's a 1.3 to one. So I did 22 grams in, got 30 grams out. Um, it had a, a TDS of, uh, I think like 13 point something. And, um, so it was hovering around 19% extraction yield. 
um, which is good. Uh, but I, I, I'm really trying to push this machine. Um, and I, I, I want people to understand that uh, from a prototype development phase, uh, really, I'm trying to break the machine, I'm trying to take it to its its ends. What 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 is the best thing that it can produce? Because um, it can produce good shots. Everybody saw that at the the trade shows and, and the demos, and and that's what I've experienced. Um, so, I, but I I'm I'm not in the business of trying to make good. I want the best. Um, so you can partially blame that on certain people that have been influential in my life. Okay, let's have a go again. Um, in a lot of my back-to-back -back shots, if I'm really trying, I can get it down to uh, like four or five minutes between a shot. Um, especially once you once you pour the water in, it, it's about four four minutes or so. So for me, that's by the time I'm done puck prep uh, and lock the basket in, I'm not waiting very long. So again, I went to 22 grams. This time, I put the paper filter in the middle of the puck. Uh, so this is something I, I worked on a few years ago. I've stopped putting uh, paper filters in my pucks for like the past two years, um, and I've really been trying to see what I can do um, without them because I just don't like that extra step. Um, but I found that the uh, paper filter in the middle of the puck is uh, uh, performs better because um, I think when, what's happening is it's redistributing water uh, the, the key is that the paper filter can't go beyond the edge of, it has to be a really good fit because if it goes beyond the edge, it doesn't pull water in enough. And if it um, is too narrow, then uh, it won't pull water from the edge because um, you really want like the, w w as water's coming down from side channeling, the, the water to pull in. So do the same thing, make a divot, a tamp. And uh, this time I, I, I won the race um, and I, uh, got the puck in before the, the, the porta filter in before the machine was at, at temperature. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, what else can I say? Well, th this, I just had to wait a little bit and, and get my camera set up and, um, pull some shots. So the, the water's above the line here at the, um, I'm gonna readjust the camera so you can see from the top. So the water's uh, above that area in the piston. Um, I'm curious if you added more water, if it would help or hurt. Uh, I was thinking I could add less water because I'm doing shorter ratios and maybe that would help with some of the, the heat trouble I've been having, um, or, or maybe not. I mean, maybe, maybe it's better to have a larger volume of water pushing through. Um, so. Let's take a take a look. Um, I should note that I don't ever pour in hot water. Um, I don't have a kettle because I don't do pour over, so I just pour in the water cold. So you're you're going from and this is like cold, like refrigerator water cold. Um, so you're going from refrigerator water cold to night. This is ninety six C um, in a matter of about five minutes. Um, so the, the, the machine heats fast. I wouldn't worry about that. This machine, the shot looked, or sorry, this shot, the, 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 the bottom looks similar to uh, most of my other shots where I have a heavy amount of side channeling. And um, you can see the, the piston start to engage. Um, I didn't test this with VST baskets or IMS baskets. Um, so I, I don't actually know if this is performing extra well because I'm using um, the Wafo Spirit. And in my previous test, the Wafo Spirit does have uh, a, a st statistically significant higher uh, extraction yield than um, VST baskets. Um, so again, this shot was a little slow. Um, the color wasn't as dark as I, I wanted. Um, but one thing I will note is in most of my shots, I haven't seen channeling or, you know, tiger stripes the, the way um, I have for other machines. Um, so I think in that sense, the, the water distribution after the initial is really good. So this shot again was this same profile. Um, I try to do other fancier profiles and I just 
I can't can't get it to go. I, and I really think it's a temperature issue. Um, so uh, I, I'm not doing extract cooling with this as I, I normally do because uh, I normally brew really hot and then I cool it down, um, which uh, gets your your the great extraction, but then the cooling also uh, allows you to not have a nasty tasting shot because it, it cools before the, the, the aromas disappear. So um, we can uh, take a look at TDS. I also didn't drink these shots today because it's too late and I made the mistake of too much coffee last night. So, um, so this one came in at slightly higher, 13.67, and the shot was a little bit longer. This was uh, 32 grams out. Um, and, uh, so the ratio is 1.5 to one. Um, so it, it was a, it was a, a good ratio. I'll pull a longer ratio if I can't get to the optimal extraction range. So this is just the, the chart from the shot. This sped up a little bit cause you can see there's a pre-infusion ramp and I don't even get to one milliliter per second before, um, liquid starts coming out. Um, if it was coming out more evenly, that would go get to a little bit higher and I'd build more pressure. Um, and I don't even start building pressure here until about 60 seconds. Um, and, and it's pretty low pressure. And this is a profile I use on the Decent where I don't have to go greater than one or two bars of, of pressure and a lower flow to hit a max uh, optimal extraction. But to each their own. So um, I'm just going to try to post what I'm doing. And if you like it, you know, I'm glad.